the general consensus is that, and it's not to oversimplify it, but if you have a property or a situation where, you know, a buck that you're hunting lives nearby and you can give him food sources that match the time of year, palatability wise, the chances are you're going to hold him to his routine. You know, and I think back to Poseidon, or I think back to, let's just say Loch Ness last year with Owen, you know, the, the velvet buck that I was, you know, hunting, you know, in the summertime, those bucks were heavily focused on nearby ag, but they still weren't going that far. And then as the beans defoliated and all of a sudden these, you know, early season greens plots, you know, and like Owen's case, you know, he did that whole variety from monster buck that had all of these different plants that in his mind, he wanted to give a food source for Loch Ness at all times of the season, had a big enough field so that the tonnage never got browsed down to the point where it was gone. But you just kind of create these spots that the bucks don't move. They, you don't see that quote unquote fall shift. And if anything, the fall shift is coming from somewhere else that they were previously at the right time of year. I think it really does take the right set of variables. You can get lucky for sure. I mean, there's deer that go on a walk. They go check a random scrape line. These cold fronts are a great time to see that random giant show up. I mean, you can't get discouraged because you don't have the perfect scenario. You know what I'm saying? But you also, in my opinion, need to temper your expectations that it's not that some of these guys we see go out and do this year to year to year. It's like, oh, that must be nice they're taking steps to make those spots specifically good for daylight activity on these cold fronts. 